If you've ever built a PC or this is your first time picking out a motherboard, it can be way more daunting than you'd probably expect. I mean, there's a ton of options out there, each with their own weird quirks or differences. You have the obvious stuff like the board size, ATX, micro ATX, mini ITX, which depends a lot on your case. And then there's the aesthetic choices, like do you want an all white board for your clean white build or something all blacked out and a little bit more stealthy. But outside of how it looks or how big it is for your case, something more important is what it actually supports. Like, is it even gonna be compatible with the CPU that you want? Does it have enough slots for what you might need and maybe even what you'll want to upgrade to in the future? For example, some motherboards only have a singular PCIe slot, which might be fine for most people who just plug in a GPU and call it a day. But if you're someone who needs a Wi-Fi card, a capture card, or even a dedicated sound card, this might be a deal breaker for you. The very first step is picking out a size that'll fit your case. Hopefully you already have your case picked out. If not, you might wanna do that. I always prefer to pick the case out first. I mean, you can pick a board. ATX is the most common. So if you're gonna pick an ATX motherboard first, you're gonna find a lot of options of cases out there. However, when it comes to mini ITX boards, there's not that many cases out there for them. So it kind of depends on what case you're gonna go for. Each one varies not just on its size, but also what it can hold up to. Like an ATX board will probably have more options than with a mini ITX. This affects not just your case size, but also how many features you get. ATX is the most common. It's a full size board. It has lots of ports and lots of room, especially for future upgrades. Micro ATX is a bit smaller and you might lose some expansion slots with this one. Mini ITX is a super compact one, great for small builds, but very limited space and usually more expensive for what you get. You know, cause you're paying the same price, but you're getting a smaller board, whatever. Buying your case before your board is completely optional. You can buy your board first and then your case after, that's completely up to you. When I was building a PC, I tried using an old motherboard from another build. Yeah, it turns out it was a, a zero cable motherboard. So like all the ports were on the back of the motherboard instead of the front. And I didn't realize it wasn't compatible with my case until after I had literally plugged everything into the motherboard and the motherboard itself into the PC. Like I had everything ready, screwed in. And then I was like, wait a minute, I can't plug in any of the cables because my motherboard is zero cable and all the ports are on the freaking back. Anyway, so yeah, however, with a guide like this, that won't happen to you, Hey. So let's move on to the basics, the socket type and the chipset. This is what determines whether your CPU will even work with the board. I'm just gonna go right out and say it and every single tech person out there will recommend PC Part Picker to you, but it can help out a lot. If you plug in your CPU, it'll automatically come up with motherboards that are compatible with that CPU. If you haven't been using this website and you're a PC builder or you're interested in PC building, this is the go-to. And like I said, every single tech person out there will recommend this website to you. It's so great. For Intel, most modern CPUs use an LGA 1700 socket. This is things like the i5-13600K or the i7-14700K, and you'll want a Z790 chipset board for that. For AMD, you're most likely using the new AM5 socket or maybe AM4, but the, the AM5 works with Ryzen 7000 and up series. This is like a B650 or an X870. However, if the CPU doesn't match your motherboard, you're just screwed. Like it's, it would just be a nightmare and having to like return your board and get a new one. It's just, you can avoid this so easily with PC Part Picker. Next up, we're talking about DDR4 and DDR5, but more specifically, this is talking about your RAM type. This is a notable mention because like I say in a lot of my videos on TikTok, if you're planning to upgrade in the future, moving from one to the other can be very pricey, like all of a sudden. Like you wanna upgrade your RAM, but you have to upgrade your motherboard and then you have to upgrade your CPU because just you might as well while you're doing that. And then all of a sudden you, you bought a whole new PC. Yay. A lot of things nowadays are using DDR5. However, DDR4 boards are still out there, especially the Intel side. So here's the key. DDR4 and DDR5 are not interchangeable. Like I mentioned, you have to buy a RAM that matches your motherboard. If your board says DDR5, don't try to put in a DDR4 RAM because it literally won't fit. So good luck. Another thing to look for on a motherboard is the amount of slots each thing has. For instance, PCIe slots, RAM slots, as well as M.2 slots. These are all important mostly because if you're planning on upgrading in the future, it can just be another annoyance if you don't have an extra PCIe slot. I personally like a motherboard with a lot of extra of everything, just in case I do wanna do an upgrade, like put in another M.2 in there for more storage. Now, when it comes to PCIe slots, these are the long ones on the motherboard where your GPU plugs in. If you're just gaming, one PCIe slot might just be enough for you. But if you're planning on adding a Wi-Fi card or a capture card or like a second GPU, which is rare, but 
possible. You can even add in a PCIe SSD add-in card for extra storage, but just make sure your board has the multiple slots. Also pay attention to the PCIe version. Gen 4 is still solid for GPUs. Gen 5, however, is faster and future-proof. So this might be something to look for as well. You also should check how many M.2 slots the board has. Most boards come with one or two or higher end ones can have up to three or even four. Another important thing that you need to look at on a motherboard and when deciding is looking at the IO on the side of the board. This holds all of the important USB slots, Wi-Fi ports, USB ports, which are less common, except, well, now that tech is advancing, it's, it's more common, which is cool and I personally just love. However, some questions worthy of asking yourself when picking a motherboard and looking at the IO shield are, do you need USB-Cs? If so, how many? I usually go for two to three because USB-C is becoming more and more common and I'm starting to use them in my build more as time goes on. But this this can also be said the same way for the USBs. Like how many USB ports would you prefer to have? This is important stuff to look at on an IO, even though you might not think so. Something else on the IO shield that's important to look at is if it has Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. These are both very important to me. Even though I literally use ethernet, I still like to have a Wi-Fi port on there just in case. Um, but if you're plugging in ethernet, you don't necessarily need a Wi-Fi board and this could potentially save you some money, I think. I'm not quite sure, honestly. As for Bluetooth, no Bluetooth is definitely a a, a deal breaker for me. No Bluetooth is the red flag. Some people don't really care about Bluetooth. However, I use it literally every single day and it is definitely important to me. But again, it just depends on you. Something like the IO layout or IO shield seems like a small detail. However, it's, it's honestly, it's more important than you might think. And some motherboards don't really come with many USBs and zero USB-Cs. And this can be kind of an annoyance in the future. And let's not forget the fun extras like a BIOS flashback or CMOS button, extra fan headers, reinforced GPU slots, and of course, RGB, if that's what you love. These are all other things that you can look for on a motherboard as well. It just depends on how picky you are. So yeah, well, picking a motherboard isn't super simple. I mean, you can kind of take one thing each step at a time and kind of check it off and use process of elimination to find what you need. Using a website like PC Part Picker, like I mentioned, can be very helpful. However, kind of knowing already what you want and might need in the future can help you whittle down what motherboard is going to be best for your build. If this video was helpful for you in any way, make sure to leave a like, drop a comment on what motherboard you're planning to upgrade to or what motherboard you currently have in your build, and I will catch you guys in the next one.